Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. As you might be able to tell from the sound of my voice, I am still sick, though at the opposite end of the sickness from my last recording. And so I'm on the mend, but my voice is still iffy. So anyway, we'll plug away as we do. And what we have here is the first of our new geostationary satellites for the geostationary satellite program. Now the geostationary satellite we had before only had 25 units of ComSat payload. What we have here is 315 units of ComSat payload, a whole lot more. And so we're going to need more of everything else, including more rocket. Uh, we have here a controller that can handle five tons instead of the old three and lots more RCS for fine-tuning the final orbit, which we will need to do. And that is mainly because we are using the Airbees again here, because they're... Well, they seem to be the most efficient thing that I could use. Um, I thought about having another Gamma 2 there, but it's actually not efficient when this is so small. As you can see, even the Airbees in a bank of three uh, only take 25 seconds. I'm having three just so that we have backup ignitions in case. Um, we could probably do it with just the center one and it might be able to last. That'll be pushing it, but it's possible. Anyway, so that will be circularizing the payload at geostationary orbit. Uh, this will be boosting it up on geostationary transfer orbit with the Gamma 2 in charge of that. We have two of these tanks here and that's because I didn't want to retool the tank, so I just put in another one. And so it's doubled burn time of the previous version, well, a little bit less, I underutilized a bit, uh, and yeah, I just didn't want to tool another tank, and so, but we're using the Gamma 2 for the same job, it's boosting the payload up to the target orbit, uh, to the target apoapsis, and now we have a very long payload fairing. Now, and that we will have to tool along with a bunch of other things. We have the same old controller here, 15 tons, I didn't want to retool the controllers, so we're uh, filling this with less fuel, so less burn time there. We're losing about 500 meters per second there, but we're, we've got enough as long as we use the boosters that we're using. And yes, we've got the Ariana, Ariana boosters, uh, the ones that we have on the Ariana rocket with the RZ2 engines. Uh, these are the RZ2 Mark 3s, the Blue Streak engines, and yep, just pull them over here. Don't have to tool them again. They are ready to go. And we do have to have a new core because that couldn't handle uh, the, the whole rocket right now. There's 393 tons, well, let's say 394. What I want is 460 though. And so we'll need a new core like that. And so there's the Deneb A4, A4 referring to the boosters from the Ariana rocket. And tooling wise, the new big controller only costs 24,000. It's the deep space controller on top, four to five tons that's gonna cost a bundle. And I am going to go ahead and tool that. On the bright side, that costs less than uh, we expected it uh, had a deal for us, but on the downside, we still need to have a new launch pad because our existing launch pad can only go 180 tons, and so I'm going to make that now. And what we want is 460 tons as the maximum, and well, uh, we probably want more width and length and height because we're going to be doing stuff. So. 11, 11, 60, we'll say, and human rated. Well, um, well, well, well. <laughs> it's gonna take 479 days to build, so that's a little bit long. If I don't human rate it now, not that much shorter. Gonna need a whole lot more engineers, too. Well, making it smaller didn't help much. Daily 479.7. I think we'll be okay. We could close one, I guess. But... Hardly matters. Looks like we'll have the resources for this rocket built in. Alright. 
I'm gonna take the plunge. We have ELA-5 under construction. I hope what it says there for changing funds over the next day, month, and year are keeping in mind the construction cost. Let's see, is it going up? It seems to be going up. All right. But that's a long time. I don't know if there's any way we can speed that up at all. We do have some sciences happening. Well, it doesn't seem like it'll take a long time to build the rocket once we have the pads, so... The fact that our deadline is 1995 in May, and our construction we complete in September of 1994, I think we'll have enough time for all that. But that leaves us with only... Oops, only uncrewed lunar surface exploration to do, so I guess we'd better do it. Now, we don't have a visible imaging device of level 2, I don't think. And so, we can't complete this objective at all right now. We need more science to unlock that to get the visible imaging device. So, all we've got is the first lunar landing uncrewed. And, yeah. All right. Let's pick it up. Let's figure out a way to land something on the moon with a 180-ton rocket. Okay, cancel that idea. I don't think we can manage to land on the moon with a 180-ton rocket unless I use some of the engines I'm forbidden from using, like, uh, oh, these guys over here or something like that, um, and the Agena engine. Uh, that would be helpful too. Well, I am using an Agena sort of thing, but not the main Agena engine. I think the line I'm going to draw is anything that has less thrust than the AJ-1027s, the Arabies, uh, we can use regardless of country of origin, but anything bigger than that I'm going to hesitate on. And so Agena's out as well. And what I have here is just a science gathering orbiter for the moon. And this is actually a bus that will also carry our eventual lander, but right now we don't have a rocket capable of boosting the lander. We can only boost an orbiter. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to gather some science. I've got the magnetic scan, visible imaging, infrared radiometry, and oral perturbation for the moon. Uh, we've put a lot of that around the Earth, but not around the moon before. And we will see how it goes. They have new... Spanking solar panels, not the Ranger ones this time. They're these uh, sort of procedural hinged solar panels with scale and designs and everything. And we've got the Lunar Orbiter design, as I felt was appropriate. So, the new thing here, and the thing we're going to test out, uh, is the Agena D secondary propulsion system, which certainly does not have more thrust than an Araby. Um, uh, it has less than one kilonewton. However, it has 255.8 seconds of ISP and 20 ignitions. Each ignition can only go for about 50 seconds. There's obviously a fudge factor on that and a total of a thousand seconds. Now we have a burn time for that. That's the final thing here of four minutes. We're not planning to do that four minutes all at the same time, obviously. So the way it's going to go is we're going to launch to orbit with the first three here, uh, transfer to the moon with uh, the next two, and then finish off the transfer to the moon with the this Agena secondary propulsion system, capture around the moon with it, and see how low we can get around the moon. This time we're going for an inclined orbit around the moon to get more science, not just the equatorial science that we've done before. So that is the goal, and we'll see how that works. So, well, let me tweak these. The little RCS pods are actually attached to this because I don't think we can attach them to the Agena things properly because uh, the symmetry won't work. So we have to sort of move them around a bit. Okay, so that's the idea. And otherwise, everything else is familiar. And the controller actually does 3.1 tons because you can see that we're a little bit over 3, so that's... a uh, it didn't seem to cost a whole lot extra to tool a 3.1 ton controller, so we've got that. And when we take a look at the tooling, we see that the controller only takes 708 to tool. Um, the other stuff is the tanks in the middle here. 
So the Agena D secondary propulsion system's own tanks aren't good enough to go for the four minutes. Uh, we also have a tank here feeding them uh, UDMH and MON3. And then we have this tank here feeding the ORM65 variant, the RDA1-300, which will help us on our boon burn to the moon. I don't know if that's the best thing or not. Let me just... Uh, that that arrangement is actually because of what we're going to do with the lander eventually. Let me, on a speculative venture here, see what happens if we just remove that business. Uh, we'll have to put these tanks back on. We do have an inconvenient mounting situation here. What if we actually use this tank... ...for this stage too? Hmm. Okay, I think this is more promising. We'll just remove this one. So, it's a weird decoupling though. Oh, this doesn't have to be high pressure anymore. Okay, I'm tooling that stuff. And I've called this the Looney Zero. The lander will be the Looney One. Hopefully. So with our orbiters, what we want uh, to do is get enough science so we can unlock interplanetary era science because we need this basic TV camera to do the mapping mission. And in order to get this, we not only need its 4T science, but also advanced capsules era electronics research, which is this one. That's 85. So we, uh, so, so yeah, we need 85 altogether. And uh, well, at least a researcher efficiency upgrade. But yeah, that's a lot. And we've got 10 right now. I don't remember seeing 85 sitting up there. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, accumulating that much has not been a thing so far. Uh, we've been quick to spend it. But yeah, so we've got the Looney Zeros building, and we'll see if we can acquire such science. Well, just while this one was under construction, we got a little bit more. We got the completion of a Cosmic Ray Science package, and so 24.4 is what we have right now, but, you know, we don't want to wait for the rest of it, so here we go. Okay, I've lined up with the moon and I've timed it so that we can potentially burn out the third stage and that'll have our apoapsis on the correct side. Uh, so, SAS on, throttle, throttle is not working today, oh, great. Uh, throttle up, and ignition. And launch will be going the southerly direction. Okay, separation and ignition. Bearings. Oh no. I don't know if this has enough comms. Hmm. For it on its own. It was designed with the lander on top in mind. Well, it's tech level 3 though, so that's pretty nice. Not much gain, we'll have to see. These days though, we have a lot of bits. Might as well start stuff. Okay, staging. Ah, uh, this is a bit short. Well, maybe we can transfer immediately. Well, not great on the inclination, not great on the periapsis. Um, we're going to have to go with the next stage here. Let's see, add apoapsis will be close enough to ascension, I think. Well, I mean, it's an approach. On the bright side, we should be inclined. Which is what we wanted. We want an inclined orbit. That might be a start. Okay, we have picked up Ascension, but um, this thing for some reason didn't communicate with that then of G, so there might be a problem with that then of G. We have a bunch of them though. Oh, isn't that the moon right there?
Well, at least we're in orbit. Science can be done. Now the untested Agena D secondary propulsion system. Probably don't have too much in here. Let's not wait until we run out of uh, comms. Well, we're still approaching Ascension, though. But we want to be able to turn off the Agena D second, secondary propulsion system, so... Alright, uh, stop that. Yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. Well, there's two of them. Okay, the meantime before, between failures is going down here. I'm gonna cut it. And then, can we start it again? Okay. We'll take the restart. Alright. I should just do it in 50 second chunks. So we went up, up to like uh, more than 60 seconds on one ignition. And that started cutting down the meantime between failures. And probably each reignition will cut it down too. Got some flight data, and let's see what our result was. Seems pretty good. RCSing doesn't help. I think we'll just go over there and do a slight radial burn in order to bring it a little bit closer. Don't have a huge amount of RCS fuel here. I mean, technically, the Gina D secondary propulsion system sort of has an RCS thing going, but not enough of one, I don't think. Yeah, there's the comm situation, though. Because I forgot to put the Communitron 16 on here. Looks like at the moon level it's gonna be okay. Periapsis is only 240 right now. Uh, that doesn't look too bad for comms, actually. Yeah, actually, that looks pretty good. Um, why don't we bring that in a little bit more, then? Let me not use Smart ASS, because I'm worried about the RCS fuel. We've already picked up some science from stuff, st some stuff. 28.7 we're at right now. Well, this serves as pretty powerful RCS, actually, the secondary propulsion system. Okay, I think 60 kilometers is fine. Yeah, I think I'll be okay on comms for that. We can't do all 635 in one burn, of course. Ordable perturbation is running, so it's satisfied with our inclination, which is currently 105 degrees. Okay, go. Not sure why there's an imbalance between UDMH and MON3 there. So we've captured. I'll shut down there for a sec. Let cool off. Looks like we're maximized at 1000 data units for this time. I don't know. Seems like we're getting plenty of data, but... Okay, going again here, right at periapsis. Okay, I'll stop it, I'll stop it. That's what our orbit looks like. Seems pretty useful. I don't know why we have so much extra at Mon 3, though. In theory, I filled it up with the mix for the Gina D. Uh, the helium and HTP are 40 RCS thrusters. Nothing else should be using anything. So, we should uh, bring the next one we're building in for a checkup to see that it has the right mixture. Maybe the Agena D secondary propulsion system, its own packs, don't have the right mix. It seems that way. I mean, uh, whatever we had in here was the right mix, which seems to be a lot of UDMH and less Mon 3. Normally, I would think it's pretty close to parity when it comes to volume, so that seems a little bit wrong to me. But then, here we have a lot more Mon 3 and less UDMH. So, one of these things is wrong. I filled this tank up with the, you know, stated fuel mixture. 
So this one probably is the mix in the actual tank, which probably has something to do with the Agena itself, rather than just this secondary propulsion system, but I don't get it. <laughs> Incidentally, it should be close to 50-50 in volume, when it comes to volume. By mass, there's a difference, but uh, with these hypergolics, I'd be expecting closer to 50-50. Okay, okay, nope. The lower the better, really, though. Okay. We'll get the high science anyway. Right, so, sundown. Okay, and I'm just gonna say shut down avionics. Let's make sure it works all the time. Should do it easily. Much more solar panel read than we needed, but then again, the solar orbiters had uh, four of these. 4% wear already, though. But it's been seven days, so I'll assume, I'll assume that that's just because of the number of days. And probably our geostationary satellite that wasn't helping us communicate, probably it's dead because of the solar panel wear already. So that might have been it. All right, well, it's already uh, running and collecting some stuff. And we're at 32.8. We need that 85 altogether. I think we'll send another one of these to collect the stuff quicker, but we should check the fuel mixture and maybe change out one of the experiments. Okay, so I'm filling this tank that we were using right up here up with the Agena D secondary propulsion mix. And it says 61.4 UDMH. 38.9 mon 3. It's based pretty close to 100 units, so we know that's basically the percentages that they have written in for this. And that's nowhere near what we have here. But this unit lets us configure this. Right now we have 843 meters per second. So let's just do that. I don't know if that'll hurt the RCS, but that means now we have. 1,169 meters per second and five minutes of burn time. It's still fine because in theory it can go for a thousand seconds and 20 ignitions. Probably we don't need the early TV camera anymore. Plenty of cosmic ray science though, so we'll put the radiation detector. Um, yeah, let's see about this thing. How much gain is that? doesn't seem to have any particular difference between tech level 2 and tech level 3 as far as the kilobits per second, so I'll just stick to tech level 2. I'm not too sure that's the right choice. That way the solar panel wear won't catch up to us so quickly. So, those were just edits on the rocket currently under construction. I think we should definitely save this as the official version of Looney Zero though. Okay. I should check on interplanetary communications and see whether that's feasible or not. We probably can't get to Mars with our uh, solar panels, but Venus possibly, right? Well, it doesn't look like we can communicate to Venus right now. Not with our current antenna. Well, let's say it's on the, well, even on the closer end, we don't seem to have anything going here. I guess we do have another tracking station upgrade available. So, yes, we can do that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of science to be had from other planets, and especially Venus, since it's closer to the Sun and will give our solar panels a little bit of an easier time. So, sure. Okay, I finished rolling out the next Looney Zero, and we have accumulated enough science points to unlock the Advanced Capsules Era Electronics Research. So, all right. And then we can get that one once we get 30 more. But the science is coming in. I don't think there's any point queuing up another Looney Zero, but let me see after the tracking station upgrade what we might be able to do at Venus, if anything. Okay, so if we boost the transmit power, we can get stuff at the minimum distance. We can get trans... well, it says no connection there. 
No, let me just go to the top there. Okay, so definitely no connection at max distance. We can just ignore that. Well, here it's got some reception there. Okay, so after the tracking station upgrade, we could get this. But active 172 watts. I mean, each of these at Venus could produce 120, but we should probably size them larger. At least they don't take so much time to make as they used to. So if the avionics shut down and these panels at this size, it'll be perpetual, but uh, that's at Earth. So at Venus, they'll produce a lot, but, you know, well, this this isn't telling me the truth right now, um, but we're expecting that it's going to be where. So I'm going to go with the Earth number as our basis for planning, and then we'll just assume that the extra they get at Venus will sort of make up for the degradation. Hopefully, I don't think I can make them much bigger and still have them fit in anything. Science-wise. Um, maybe we should send the basic stuff first. It's probably going to be a fly... well, it's definitely going to be a flyby. We're not capturing into orbit around... Venus. 4,000. Sort of depends. So, transfer window planner. I mean, we don't really want to start at this initial orbit. Oh, they have the angle these days, huh? Five degrees. Final orbit, we don't care. We're, we're not doing an insertion burn. Oh, 3,544? Well, that's great. If we can swing that. Okay, add KC alarm. 337 days. Well, we certainly can build it by then. Okay. Let's uh, get building... Oh, that's a loony. Oh, shoot. I didn't want to call it a loony. Oh, I guess we'll figure it out. Uh, let's let's just call this uh, Venus Zero. Uh, what? No, let's call it an Eve Zero. Rename. Okay, here we go with another orbiter for the moon. We currently have 32.5 science. We need, just need about 8 more, well, 7.5 more. And so, well, we should be able to get it by the time we uh, set this up and check in again at the R&D building. And then we can start unlocking the science for the new TV camera. And then we can finally do some of the missions in the new Lunar Probe mission pack. So, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Of course, both of these lunar orbiters could help with communications, but only for as long as their solar panels can hold out. Okay, staging. Bearings. Okay, staging. This time I think we'll make orbit, but it'll be a tight orbit. I don't know if I wanted to correct the inclination that much. Oh well. Well, just about right. Okay. Separation. Well, right now would be a good time to go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, let's go. You can just let this straight stage run out. Uh, we do have that DNMG helping out. But, I honestly don't know what that one was, but it seems like a not successful one. Ascension's a bit far away right now. More equatorial, this one. 
not good for the orbital perturbation experiment. We'll have to fix that. Okay, well, that's not at the moon yet. Maybe the RCS can do the rest. Okay, yes, the RCS did in fact do the rest, but we'll do a mid-course adjustment so that we get a more polarish orbit. Uh, for now, we're gonna throw that orbit off by decoupling. I do like how that goes away. The, that vigorous decoupler that we keep using uh, in this case. Well, again, uh, it threw us off a bit, but we'll correct that. Around here, if uh, ish, yeah. But it's better than having that stage collide into us. Okay, out we go. With a wobble. Okay, let's give the secondary propulsion system a go. Well, that looks pretty good for now. Let's go into Moon SOI. Oh yeah, same sort of situation. I think we can be comfortable with pulling that a little bit closer. Might be a little bit back. It might be some horizon problem there. We'll see. Okay. There's the lunar surface. Everything seems to be running. A two degree inclination this time. And initial capture burn. I would actually like to point up a bit. So our periapsis doesn't go down any lower. We've captured around the moon. So we'll do our uh, burn time respecting switch off there and get to periapsis. And we'll do another burn here. Uh, that's Earth, it's setting. Let's see. That seems all right. Okay. If we did accidentally keep this stage burning, we'd end up smashing into the surface, so we do have to be careful this time. Last time, even if we burnt out the stage, we wouldn't smash into the surface because of the fuel imbalance. Okay, that's enough for that burn. And I think last one. And we'll try to get this into an entirely low orbit this time. Okay, that's a nice tight orbit around the moon, uh, 75 by 55. First time we've gotten it quite like that and we still have plenty to spare. Let's make sure that we're oriented for sun. Okay, shutting down avionics and let's see if it does recharge as it is right now. Seems good. Science, we're 0.1 away from what we need. Let's just wait. There we go. All right. So, science is transmitting. This little guy is doing its thing. And let's go back to Space Center and spend our science points. All right, as planned. We'll be unlocking that. And we'll get that basic TV camera, which will hopefully allow us to do this first lunar orbiter and mapper contract. And we'll need the pad for first lunar landing, I'm pretty sure. But this one we can do without the pad. There's no expiry date otherwise, so we can just pick that up too. Got a lot of other stuff to do too, though. As well as a new Venus probe that's under construction. So, with that to look forward to, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.